like look at this it comes out like a gel and it just rubs in just like like that like it absorbs so quickly and yes i can look like darth vader but at least i'm preventing sun damage Hey everyone, it's Dr. Joyce Park, and oh my gosh, it is finally getting warmer here in Seattle. It usually is cold-ish up until about June, but this year we've been blessed with some warm weather and sunny days, and that has really improved my mood, actually. So in light of this warm weather, I decided to make a video today about how to transition your skincare to summer months. The main things you need to think about are that you're getting more UV radiation from the sun because the sun's out for a longer period of time. We tend to get more oily and more acne prone in the summertime. And some ingredients that we were not really able to tolerate during winter, now we can really start to work those back into our routine. So I'm gonna go through a couple of different tips and tricks and things to think about as we transition our skincare for summer. And I'll include in there a bunch of my favorite products and product recommendations for you as we get our skin ready for warmer weather. So first of all, things that can worsen during the summer months. So skin conditions that can really flare include acne and oily skin, rosacea because of the increased sun exposure. Also, any disorders where you get hyperpigmentation or dark spots. You'll find that your freckles, any scars might get darker, as well as pigmentary conditions like melasma. So keeping all of this in mind, I wanna help you design a skincare routine that can really target a lot of these conditions that we see flare during the summer months. My first tip is to switch to a lighter moisturizer. So when I went over my winter skincare routine, which I'll link below, and this went really viral because I think a lot of people struggle with dry skin during winter time. In that video, I recommended using very thick, heavy, occlusive moisturizers. But now that it's getting warmer, I want us to move away from ingredients that are heavy and thick and occlusive. I want to steer clear of ingredients like petroleum, shea butter, thick oil, Oils, beeswax, lanolin, etc., and opt for lighter gels, serums, things that absorb more quickly into the skin and feel more lightweight. So I have two recommendations for moisturizers here. One is the Clinique Dramatically Different Gel Moisturizer. This is an oil-free gel moisturizer that contains hyaluronic acid, as well as a blend of barley, sunflower, and cucumber to help soothe and also help repair the skin barrier. I've been using this myself in the past few weeks and I've been loving using it, especially in the morning because it layers really well under sunscreen and makeup. Second product recommendation I have for you here is the Skin Fix Barrier Restoring Gel Cream. Now their triple lipid cream is a favorite of mine for the winter months, but they also came out with a lighter, more fast absorbing gel consistency for the spring and summer months. This has the same patent pending BL3 lipid complex, which contains a patent pending blend of vitamins, lipids, and peptides that can really help to repair your skin barrier. I find that this formulation is really soothing as well as hydrating without being overpowering. And I love that Skin Fix came out with a version of this that's heavier for the winter months and then this version for the warmer months. Number two tip is to apply your sunscreen and remember to reapply it frequently. So we know that SPF is important all year round because we can get UV radiation even during winter months too, but this is especially important in the summertime when you're out and about, the UV index is higher and we're likely spending a lot more time outdoors. So it's very important to remember to apply your sunscreen in the morning, but also to reapply your sunscreen every two hours that you're going to be out directly under the sunlight. Now I made a whole YouTube video talking about how the heck do we reapply sunscreen on top of makeup and I go over all the different ways sticks sprays compact cushions powders etc so I'll link to that below but the other important thing to remember is if reapplying sunscreen is really not your jam you can always opt for UV protective clothing or hats or visors the blue stone sun shield is a favorite of mine and I love using it when I'm going out for hikes I like like that you can change the angle depending on where the sun is in the sky and yes I can look like Darth Vader but at least I'm preventing sun damage. So 
So I'll link to that sunshield below. And when you're choosing sunscreens, you should look for oil-free, non-comedogenic sunscreens that are very lightweight. Two that I've been really liking that are more of a gel consistency rather than a really hydrating cream. One is the Beauty of Chosan Ginseng Moist Sun Serum. And I'm gonna do a more in-depth video reviewing a whole bunch of Asian sunscreens in the upcoming weeks. But this one I tried recently and I'm so impressed at this lightweight gel consistency. It comes out like a gel and it just rubs in just like, like that. Like it absorbs so quickly. I do notice a slight smell when I use this, which doesn't bother me, but if you don't like fragrance, this might not be the best option for you. I love that they came out with a gel version and you know there's this really popular one, the Relief Sun, which is more of a creamy consistency, whereas this is more of a gel consistency. This contains ginseng extract, which has long been used in Korean beauty for its hydrating properties. And this also contains niacinamide, which I made a whole video on why niacinamide is so amazing for its anti-inflammatory properties as well as its skin brightening properties. So this really is a stunner. Like I was really surprised to try this out and it really blew me away for how quickly it absorbs, how hydrating it is, how lightweight it is, and my skin just absolutely loves this. The other gel sunscreen I would recommend is from Isntree. It's the Hyaluronic Acid Daily Sun Gel. This one is SPF 30 PA++++. And when I put it on, you can see it comes out like a gel and it also just absorbs so nicely and so quickly into the skin. This one isn't as much of like a jelly as the Beauty of Chosun one, but this one is really nice too, super lightweight. I feel like a lot of these Korean sunscreens are really lightweight, so when I go over my Asian sunscreen video in a week or two, I mean all of those can be used during summer and year round as well. Next, during summer, because of the UV rays, hyperpigmentation gets worse. So any dark spots that you already have, including scars, freckles, sunspots, if you have melasma, all of that may get worse. So I want you to use ingredients like vitamin C, niacinamide, azelaic acid, kojic acid, licorice, arbutin, tranexamic acid, and AHAs and BHAs. All of these ingredients can be helpful for lifting pigment. Now, I just listed a whole bunch of ingredients and it'll be hard for me to talk about products for all of those categories, but I'll link to the niacinamide video below so you'll have that. And then in terms of vitamin Cs, I have so many vitamin Cs that I love, but two that I'll highlight today. The Skin Better Alto Advanced Defense and Repair Serum. This has THD ascorbate, which is a very non-irritating lipid soluble form of vitamin C. And this is my personal favorite. It goes on like a lightweight serum. So it's hydrating enough that I don't have to use an additional serum or moisturizer in the morning. And then the second one is the Peter Thomas Roth Potent C Serum, which is also THD ascorbate based and also a serum. And these two are just so, so good. I love them both. A third alternative, just because I have to throw this in there, is the Vanny Cream Vitamin C Serum, and that one is also THD ascorbate based and a really great affordable option. I can't talk about hyperpigmentation without again stressing the importance of using sunscreen. Actually, it has been shown that visible light from the sun can worsen darkening in the skin. For example, if we're talking about melasma, if we're talking about sunspots or scars, visible light, like blue light from the sun, can actually worsen those dark spots. So I do recommend using an iron oxide containing sunscreen if you struggle with hyperpigmentation because studies have shown that iron oxides can actually block visible light and that can be very helpful for preventing further darkening of your existing dark spots. I have a whole bunch of tinted sunscreen with iron oxides that I absolutely love. A few of them that just come to mind include the Isden Ageless Sunscreen, which also contains photolyase, a DNA repair enzyme that helps to repair damage to the DNA from sun. Second one is the Peter Thomas Roth Max Mineral UV Sunscreen. 
That one is amazing. It goes on really well. It has a universally flattering tint that I really like. Another one is the Tatcha Silk Sunscreen, which I'm going to review in a future video. This one has a really flattering tint. A lot of tints are too dark for my skin, but this one is just very lightly tinted and I really like how this goes on. Elta MD also has an amazing tinted UV clear sunscreen, which is great for those who struggle with acne or rosacea because it has niacinamide. And like I mentioned before, acne and rosacea can flare during the summertime so that can be a great option for you as well. Last but not least tip I have for you is that you can resume a lot of the ingredients that you might have cut back on during winter time because your skin was too dry and sensitive. So products like these include anything with acids like AHAs or BHAs. You might have not been using those as regularly and even your retinol and your retinoid containing products which can be a little bit more irritating during the winter, you can go ahead and use all of those now. I've gone through some of my favorite acid products before, but if you have acne, the Polish Choice 2% Liquid Exfoliant is a great option for you. I also do like the Drunk Elephant Sukari Baby Facial to use once or twice a week in place of your retinoid. In terms of retinoids or retinol products, my personal favorite retinoid containing product is the Skin Better Alpha Ret Overnight Cream. That's the only retinoid that my really sensitive rosacea prone skin can tolerate. And it's actually a retinoid conjugated with a lactic acid along with a whole host of other goodies. So that's my retinoid of choice for those with sensitive skin. But if you don't have sensitive skin, you can purchase Differin over the counter as your retinoid or you can talk to your dermatologist for a prescription for tretinoin. So I hope all of these tips were helpful. There are a lot of things that we can keep in mind as we're transitioning to a summer skincare because of that additional UV exposure, as well as certain skincare conditions that tend to flare during the hotter months. So if you have any questions about any of the things that I talked about, please drop them below. I'll link to all of the different products I mentioned, as well as some related videos where I discuss a couple of topics pertaining to this as well. Please let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover. Until next time.